Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think we're going to get started. A couple of people I know are having a little bit of difficulty joining in, um, but we've just sent out some new passwords for those. So hopefully everyone can join us soon. Um, and it's great to have all of you here with us already. Um, my name's Amy Smith and I'm the Marketing Manager at East Coast College. So thank you for joining us today for this Careers Advisor webinar. Before we get started, I just want to make you all aware that we are recording today's webinar. Um, none of your details will be able to be seen. Um, you will just be visible what's on screen at the moment and, and the people that are doing the presentation today. And this just allows us to be able to share this with other people that aren't able to make it to this session. There's also a question and answer box that you should see at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to pop any questions in there as we go and we will allow some time at the end of the presentation to get to some of your questions and, and hopefully we'll be able to answer those for you. Um, so just to introduce uh, who you'll be hearing from today, uh, we've got our Principal and CEO, Stuart River, uh, Nikki Lane, the Assistant Principal for Student Wellbeing and Support, Keith Shields, our Principal for Lowestoft Sixth Form College, and our three Assistant Principals, Holly Chase, Pam Burke and Rachel Bunn. So uh, first of all, let me hand over to Stuart Rimmer, who's going to do uh, a quick welcome. Hi, so great to uh, to see so many people on the uh, the call this afternoon. Um, uh, Nikki invited me to just say a few words um, by, by way of welcome. I think it's, it's probably worth reflecting uh, for me, uh, now we're sort of in COVID or, or now as heading towards post COVID, there's probably going to be more pressure on careers services, careers advice of guidance in this kind of broadest definition than probably ever before. Uh, as we start you know, to exist with an economic recession, we know that the young people are more often the hardest hit within those um, and the amount of choices available might start to, to restrict. So, so I think that uh, where some people may have had aspirations to do one thing in the past, uh, some of those plans can sometimes be disrupted and uh, people might take alternative choices about uh, whether to adopt sort of HE programmes or not. Um, and, and as the industry sort of shifts quickly, I think the, there's going to be a huge pressure on uh, you as all professionals within careers advice uh, in order to, to provide the best advice you can. And, and I'd like to assure you that East Coast College is going to be here with you every step of the way to try and help do that. We're uh, intrinsically linked to the local enterprise partnership and uh, sort of got deeply rooted into well over a thousand employers in our local community so we've got a real sort of sense of where the uh, the direction of travel is in certain sectors certain industries and the requirements that they're they're, they're talking about so i think just uh, quickly to to also reflect on the year that we've had so uh, whilst the last few months have been disrupted uh the college has uh, had made some huge uh, achievements uh, not less uh, such than the uh, getting the Ofsted grade two uh, to be identified as a good provider back in March, uh, just before lockdown. That makes us not only the largest provider uh, for education skills uh, within Great Yarmouth for Waveney, but it also makes us the best. Um, we're also the largest provider of things like STEM uh, subjects with thousands of learners studying uh, at the college every year. Uh, we. Also, in the last uh, few months of the academic year, required Nexus training. So, if you remember, many of you on the call, schools will be have used Nexus training. Uh, they got into difficulties, and we uh, stepped in because we felt that it was necessary, um, if not essential, actually, to provide uh, 14, 16 year olds with opportunities to to study engineering subjects within our communities. Uh, we've also um, had some success in uh, being approved to run over five T levels. So they won't, uh, you'll be reading a lot about those. Um, they won't start until the 21-22 the, uh, academic year, but we're uh, now approved to, to do five. So that's the, the most in any uh, college in the, in the region. Um, and we've also um, re-gained matrix accreditation. Uh, we've won Beacon Awards uh, by the AOC for our work in mental health and wellbeing. Uh, we've uh, won awards from uh, East England Energy Group uh, we've uh, opened the International Education Centre uh, of Excellence in November. We opened the Energy Skills Centre for £11.7 million build um, and looks absolutely fantastic to, to be at the forefront of the energy and engineering STEM agenda. Um, and throughout COVID, actually, we've done huge amounts of work to support our community. We see ourselves very much as a community impact college. Uh, only yesterday, uh, news fresh out of the, uh, out of the blocks, 
uh, we, we uh, launched our, our history, the 150 years uh, of college history, showing all of its ups and downs through the, through the years, and that's going to be available uh, on our website later today. Uh, but we also, alongside of that, in looking backwards, we start to look forward to what the next 10 years uh, at the college is going to look like. And we, got, we launched some really ambitious and exciting plans yesterday, uh, including uh, make, uh, aspirations to um, get a higher education centre uh, opened in Great Yarmouth, uh, putting a £30 million investment across the next few years into our, our estate so that we've really got those cutting edge facilities that we, we really do need. Um, and, and also to our aspirations to, to gain Ofsted outstanding uh, in the next co a couple of years. And the way we're going to do that is by continually innovating our curriculum. And I think that's where uh, you all come in a little bit, that we um, want to make sure that our curriculum is guided through not just what employers need from a kind of skills perspective uh, and a regional sector perspective um, in things like energy and uh, digital uh, economies, but we also want to know what the students coming through really want. And that means that careers advice needs to be a two-way dialogue between yourselves and, and schools and, and settings and, and us as a, uh, an FE and skills provider. Um, so I think that the work in, in careers advice has never been so important and, uh, and it needs to be this kind of collaborative endeavor between us that we're going to get the best advice we can to the young people coming through in probably the trickiest of times they'll have been in for a number of years. So uh, with, with that in mind, um, I, I know that Gatsby is always on all of our minds uh, and will continue to be so whether COVID's here or not. Uh, so I'm going to uh, leave uh, the welcome there and all of our achievements uh, and hand over to Nikki Lay who will uh, get you up to speed and how we can help you with Gatsby. Stuart. Um, hello everybody, welcome. Um, I just wanted to um, just say a few words really um, around Gatsby um, and um, kind of our, our approach to careers in the college um, and just to share a few ideas about how, about how we can work together uh, going forward around kind of a, an area approach to, to Gatsby. Um, so I'm just going to move the, the slides on please Amy. Okay, so in terms of working together, as Stuart mentioned, it's never um, been so important perhaps for us to be um, to be working um, collegiately. Um, in terms of um, our cross-college model of, of careers, we take very much a cross-college um, approach to this. Um, so that might be um, our specialist careers team, around coaching, mentoring. Our teachers take um, a, a really, really... Um, um, important um, view of um, careers and uh, really inspire young people to kind of get involved in understanding their specialist sectors um, in kind of work and the guidance they ever give them. We work really closely with employers and actually as we go through the webinar you'll hear much more about that from our curriculum teams so they're giving you live examples of, of what that that looks like and also kind of you know nod back to what Stuart's just mentioned around the, um, the strategic partnerships that we've got so it's a uh, um, it's a model really that makes sure that, that we're on at the forefront of what's happening in our, in our local labour market um, and understanding actually how to um, support our young people and adults in um, getting the careers advice that, that they need to, to help them move forward in exactly the same ways as you would you would be wanting um, for your um, young people or the clients that you work with. Um, obviously we've just recently had exciting news around development of um, careers hub in the east um, and I think actually that's really will really support us in in our work together um, to develop um, how we move forward in delivering um, Gatsby. Uh, so on the screen at the moment, um, you can see that I've just I've shared the the eight Gatsby benchmarks and just given some examples really of of how we might be able to work together. Um, so some of those things that we're already doing. So as a college uh, for the sixth form and the East Coast College, we're already coming into um, to schools or uh, working in education settings. Um, to support young people and, and adults and um, think about the courses and the careers and pathways that they've got. Uh, we're supporting with transitions. We come in to um, help with mock days, um, interview days um, in schools and, and that kind of work. Um, but I think actually we've got the opportunity now to actually think about what we've learned um, for over the last 12, 13 weeks about um, using digital technology. So that's maybe thinking about webinars um, and connecting with subject teachers and form leaders. Um, in schools that we may not be able to um, to normally speak to because of time constraints. I think we, we, we can kind of move that forward. 
making those connections between subject leads within um, within education settings and the college and actually develop some of the partnerships um, there so we're moving um, as a local area and, and forwards in that way. Um, I've shared some other ideas as well, I'm just going to pick out um, a couple of those um, and, and I would invite you perhaps to get in contact with me. I've, in, the last slide um, in the webinar um, includes my contact details so you can um, get in touch to talk through any of the ideas that you might have that I might not have included in here or um, to kind of develop something that, that I mentioned. Um, so those things might include um, class support, um, so our students who have developed their learning and knowledge actually utilising their, them in terms of peer support and coming into classes or using digital technology um, to support your GCSE learners for example to, to get them ready to transition into college or think about um, their, their career ideas. Um, actually offering work-related experiences around master classes, labour market knowledge um, through our teachers or um, through our um, the other staff we have in the college. Um, virtual work experience, definitely something that's kind of come up in the last few weeks more than at any other time that I can remember kind of working in careers. Um, so as a college, we have such a wide range of opportunity for, um, for students to learn about the workplace. So our finance team, HR team, um, you know, developing experiences actually beyond um, what they might be learning in the classroom with work-related experiences. Um, I think um, transition visits or virtual support is something that we're already doing and I would really encourage um, schools in particular to, uh, to get in contact with us for that because as an example, our wellbeing team are working with young people to help them get used to um, to video calls uh, in a college environment um, and we're doing some visits using our, um, our online tour of the college which is on our website so we're working with people to click around into different areas of the college so they can get used to what it looks like before they, before they actually um, come and start with us. So that's just a few examples as I say please don't get in contact with me um, all, always welcome to talk through um, ideas. Um, I'm going to start to introduce the um, curriculum um, team to you now, but before I start, I just wanted to, to, to start off by mentioning our Mer Merchant Navy Debt Cadet Program, probably one of our newest and most exciting um, developments that, that we've got over the last year. Um, it's been, um, as you can see on the screen in front of you, um, so it's been established and, and worked with um, quali real quality um, support from the Merchant Navy Training Board, Maritime Coast Guard Agency, as you can see. The students who are interested in that um, work through several different phases. You can see on the screen in front of you, actually, what it looks like. I'm not going to go through it um, in too much detail um, because if you would like to find out more information, uh, we can send that to you. We do also have um, um, Khaled, who's our curriculum lead, uh, available for questions at, at the end if you've got anything specific you'd like to ask. Um, but essentially, it breaks down into several phases. Learners are, um, are working at level three and they have approved time um, at sea as well as in the classroom. They're working with um, industry experts um, to take them forward um, into their next step. Um, and essentially they're using the Energy Skills Centre, which is one of the most sophisticated uh, maritime and engine room simulation, simulation um, centres in the UK. Um, when they start working with us, um, we will kind of get, get to know them, help them think about what's coming next, um, and then talk through actually what that would look like. So that's a fully sponsored um, three-year cadet training program. It can lead to an HNC, certificate in competency, um, but also chief officer progress um, onto the master, uh, which would be um, captain. Um, so cadets can gain employment as a fully qualified officer of the watch um, or on any ship type um, around the world. Um, so you can see that actually it's a really well clear thought out um, progression route for, for those students. Uh, my suggestion would be um, that we would start maybe um, earlier on um, in, in school, so maybe year nine onwards, for those students who you think might be interested and actually develop programmes with them so they can visit the college, get to know about those careers. Um, so we, kind of, we, we build up their knowledge. For those that are either currently in year 11 still looking at their options or in year 10, that's something we can work on uh, really quickly to help them um, find out about what their options are there because it's available to them um, from this year. 
Uh, so if that's the case um, for you, please do get in touch and we will organise that with, with you um, separately. Okay, so I'm going to start us then off with uh, moving to Rachel Barnes. So Rachel's going to update us around apprenticeship. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Nikki. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so just to give you an update on the apprenticeships that we offer at East Coast College, we actually work with over 600 employers across Norfolk and Suffolk. And at the current time, we've got around 800 active apprentices um, studying with us each year. They do cover from levels two, three, and then we offer a range of higher level apprenticeships as well. So that apprentices can actually study whilst at work across the levels of provision. Um, apprentices obviously give the young person the chance to earn while they learn and combine the practical training in a job whilst at college. Thank you, Amy. So our current offer covers a breadth of subjects. We have engineering, offshore wind, construction, plumbing, electrical, motor vehicle, as well as service industries such as hairdressing, hospitality, childcare, business management. And new for this year, we're looking at restarting our offer in terms of groundworks and boat building, as both of those are very important to the region and to current projects coming on board. Um, you'll see in the slide there an email contact if you do have any queries. We do have the team that are willing to help at any point in time if you or your young person require any advice. So the current apprenticeship landscape, obviously with COVID, there is a lot of concern in terms of future employment and actually the impact on apprenticeships. At this moment in time, we've actually got 99.9 .9 of our employers have retained their current apprentices and very positive in terms of future recruitment. Um, we've all heard on the news possible um, murmurings of support in terms of making sure apprenticeship is growing, not shrinking in terms of COVID. And I'm sure that in the next few weeks, we will see ways that employers are gonna be supported to take on and maintain apprenticeship growth, which I think is really, really positive, not only for the sector, but also young people's careers. One thing I'd also like to mention is my colleagues will be talking about study program, but there's also a vital part of the, that, which is work experience. Um, so we promote all young people to undertake work experience whilst at college. And this provides a really valuable stepping stone into possible apprenticeships. So over 50% of our students that did extended placement this year have actually gone on to secure employment or apprenticeships. So I would advise that if you are supporting a young person, actually highlighting the extras that they get with the course, not just college study, would be really beneficial. Thank you. So I'd like to pass you over now to my colleague, Keith, who is the principal at Lowestoft Sixth Form. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rachel. Uh, and thank you for everybody who's logged in. My name is Keith Shields and I'm the principal of the Sixth Form College. For the next 10 minutes or so, I just want to provide a quick overview of the curriculum offer at the Sixth Form. To your relief, probably I can't see your faces and this is probably a good thing, as if I did know you, I possibly wouldn't, wouldn't recognise you, particularly with three months without a hairdresser and unchecked beard growth but I am presuming many of you have worked for me before and, then, and are familiar with some of what I have to say. But equally, I appreciate there are a number of you who will not know much about the Sixth Form Centre, so I just want to give you a little bit of background to the Sixth Form. The Sixth Form Centre was built in 2011. We were lucky to get it, as it was the last new build, Sixth Form, in the country before George Osborne's austerity measures were introduced. It formed part of the Suffolk's LEA strategy uh, to update and improve the outcomes of post-16 education in Lowestoft and the surrounding areas. Any of you who have been in the, obviously in the uh, town for long enough would know it was obviously the Sixth Form Consortium beforehand. Looking at actually as a quick college overview, the building cost in excess of £25 million and over £3 million was used to equip and resource it. It is a beautiful building. Indeed, I would actually say inspiring both to students, staff and all who actually enter it. A comment was made recently by an Ofsted inspector 
and it sticks in my mind. She compared this building to a cathedral. She said it was light and airy, and yet your eyes are constantly drawn upwards to marvel at the architecture. As you can see, hopefully on the slides, it's also very well resourced with many purpose-built rooms designed to accommodate learning uh, for the modern day learner. And I'll just turn to the montage here. The montage gives you an idea of what the building is like inside. Um, as Nikki mentioned before, it seems a good time to mention that we have a new addition to our webpage, a 360 degree virtual tour. What's good enough for the Louvre and the Colosseum has now come to the Six Form Centre and East Coast. The link does run through, I think, Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer if you want to try it out. Slide four, the next slide, the curriculum overview, please. Right, let's move on to the overview of the curriculum. Our main curriculum offer is made up of level three BTEC type qualifications and A-levels. However, approximately 20% of our year 12 cohort is made up of level two students. We offer three GCSE subjects, maths, English, and science. We offer Cambridge Technical and Science as a progression route to level three BTEC offer, mainly the science routes. All students study in level two programs will have a program that supports their progression and their careers aims. We support them at an individual level. At level three, we offer over 23 A-level courses and 10 BTEC routes. Slide five, please, Amy. These are our, this is our A-level uh, package. There's a list of 23 A-levels here, and we offer them as a two-year linear qualification. We're constantly updating our uh, curriculum, uh, and this year we've added computer science and environmental science to our program. Geology has also been added for a 2021 start. Since the college merger with East Coast, our curriculum offer has been enhanced further. Using well-established expertise of East Coast, and many of our learners this year can now cross-pollinate between the two sites and take courses such as engineering, making the most of the new equipment and the infrastructure which is on offer. Stuart mentioned it's a brand new build. It's exciting for our students to be able to actually enjoy some of those facilities as well. The centre is literally 25 yards away. You could hit it with a stone, a well-aimed stone. Just a quick announcement for the cricket season to be start. Slide six, please. The BTECs. Here's a list of our BTEC type qualifications. All level three vocational courses are a mix of new RQF BTECs or Cambridge Nationals. These courses are supported with a range of uh, work-based opportunities. For instance, our medical science students were the offer attending the James Paget uh, Academy Healthcare program. This allows students to involve themselves in various sections of the hospital and they visit on a weekly basis. My own daughter actually took the program and she found it invaluable in help, helping to make an idea of what career she wanted to be. She wanted first to be a, a paramedic, then obviously she changed to a midwife, nurse, and back to being a paramedic. And it's through this work experience that she was able to make that selection. BTEX at the lowest of sixth form uh, can be mixed with another BTEC or with an A-level program. But again, the program a student will study will always be discussed at an individual level. Slide seven, please. These are our entry qualifications uh, for students. Like most centres, we use entry qualifications as a guide at enrolment. Yet again, I've got to say actually that students will be seen as individuals. We will look at historical data and years of practice amongst the staff has meant that we are pretty good at judging the potential success of a student during the interviews. And sometimes we will bend the rules and the guidelines for entry. This year, we do plan to take into account the COVID situation and the lockdown in our decision-making process. But equally, it would be unfair if we allow students to attempt subjects that are likely to fail, thus wasting time and a year out of their precious education. Again, since the merger with the East Coast, we have a greater flexibility and to find a program of study that will far more closely meet the students' needs and careers aims. Next slide, please, uh, Amy. Uh, 
I want to put a side in about the outstanding results which we achieved. I'm quite sure as uh, careers advisors, you want to actually sort of obviously sort of, if you are suggesting a career move or a path to study and things like that, which would include the lowest of six form, that they're going to be in safe hands. I can assure you they are. We're proud of our results and I think rightly so because we've achieved these results four years in a row. And if we just go through them quickly, a 99.7% plus a level pass rate. In one year, uh, two years ago, we achieved 100%. 44% A star to B high grades. At one year, almost 50%. 73% A stars to C. And for our BTECs, our diplomas, 100% pass rate. And 89% of our students last year achieved a distinction star or a distinction. We've also been included in the top 25% nationally for value added measures. For four years running, value added measures measure the progress a student makes in an institution. And indeed, some of our subjects such as STEM, maths, physics and IT have been rated uh, in the top 1% nationally. Please, uh, Amy. Uh, I should have said just before, this was four years in a row we've done this. We're not a yo-yo college. We are a college which has actually achieved these consistently year after year. My slide nine looks at progression. Uh, and it looks at progression routes available for our students. At level two, students may be looking at a three-year program of study with us if they move on to a level three program or they may leave after a year into a meaningful employment or an apprenticeship. All our students have a chance to take retake maths and English GCSE, and some functional skills qualifications are available. There's also a chance that students can remain at the college and move into HE uh, after their level three qualifications, as many through Suffolk University have the opportunity to move on to, as I say, a degree level course or foundation degree. Okay, slide 10, please. I'm looking at my final slide there because it's a reminder to people like myself who bang on constantly about our results that college is not all about our qualifications. And we do like to think that our, colleges, our college provides students a great opportunity to develop more and participate in a range of activities. We are an inclusive centre. Uh, we have a range of support services and an excellent ALS department. We have fantastic facilities, great support, outstanding teachers and results. And all this really creates happy learners. I just end my little uh, talk with a quick comment, which was made by one of our parents, but I think encapsulates the college ethos well. And I quote, what I like so much about Lowestoft Sixth Form College is that you are large enough to offer a child's needs, but equally you're small enough to care. Thank you for listening. I now hand you over to Holly Chase. Hello. Um, it's really, really nice to, to see so many people joining us today. And I really welcome the chance to speak about the areas um, at East Coast College that I look after. Um, so if we could start with animal science, we're going in alphabetical order here. Um, so we offer three levels and this is at our Yarmouth campus only. So um, like all of our level one courses here, so I won't repeat myself as we go along, the heart of the level one course is to build on that confidence, resilience, um, sort of developing those maths and English and communication and interpersonal skills. Um, which, which leads students to comfortably move on to level two and three, which is very, very science-based. And it gives uh, students the opportunity to sort of progress into careers um, in, such as apprenticeships and um, animal sanctuary and a zoologist, wildlife reserves and charity trusts. And we also have our um, foundation degree here in wildlife and conservation where students get the opportunity to go on a trip to South Africa. Um, and as my colleague Rachel said, there is a significant work placement element within the animal science course, in particular at level two and three, 
which gives our students the opportunity to experience a wide range of possible careers. So they can, you know, if they're, if they're unsure or if they thought they wanted to go into one thing and they've tried a work placement in, in something else, they often uh, do change their minds. And, and as Rachel also said, this is where they secure employment or apprenticeships in these work placements. So yes, these are some of the, um, the progression career opportunities. We do have our own uh, animals on site. So we have exotics and um, we have uh, our furry animals. And we, we tend to take the students out on trips to um, you know, see, see the, bigger, the bigger animals. So we've gone to many, many places um, to allow them that, that wide breadth and opportunity. Um, as, as well as that, we have fantastic guest speakers to support the curriculum. So we've had dog grooming, um, and we've also had behavior therapists. We've had the owl sanctuary. So it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic course for those people who are interested in, in the science and the care and psychology of looking after animals. Thank you, Amy. Right, so the next one is um, our beauty therapy and media makeup courses. So we start at level two in there um, on our Great Yarmouth and our Lowestoft campus. Um, it's where those students develop the, the skills, the professional skills needed to work within the industry. Uh, we enter lots and lots of competitions. Um, we uh, recently had a gold medalist winner in our world skills competition for the UK. So the, the tutors and uh, students work really, really hard to, you know, to, to, to get recognized for their professional skills that they've developed along the way. And with our medium makeup, uh, Amy, on the next slide, that's a, that's a very um, well subscribed course. Um, it's run by a, uh, a tutor fresh out of industry who has a wealth of knowledge. We've had a lot of social media coverage actually with this course uh, during COVID because she's managed to do some fantastically creative assessment. Um, so that, that is, that's also a, a course that sits nicely within our, within our beauty therapy and media makeup range. Um, this allows, it, um, upon completion of level two and level three, you can uh, go into an apprenticeship, um, go into the hairdressing industry. We have lots of students who have gone into cruise ships um, and, and gone into salon ownership. And again, you can go into HE uh, by studying level four in management. So there's, there's a wide range of opportunities there. They're, they're not uh, limited in any way. So the next one is childcare. This is offered um, on our Yarmouth and Lowestoft campus. It starts at level one, um, which again, just like animal care, works on that confidence and resilience that we see students who come in at level one lacking. Um, you don't have to start at level one. If you have the right entry requirements, you can go on to, straight onto level two or level three. Uh, both level two and three give a license to practice. You have a, a significant work placement at level three. You're, you're in um, a nursery or a school for 400 hours um, and at level two for 250 hours. So, um, it, it, you know, it, it really does link the, the theory that you learn in the classroom really does underpin the practice that you're able to see when you're out in placement. So we have a range of degrees here that um, our students can move into once they complete level three, um, which you can see on the screen there, or they can go straight into employment. So nursery nursing, um, working in a reception class, a specialist school. We've had several students go on to Camp America or um, nannying abroad. So there, there's, there's a wide range of opportunities. Midwifery is one of them, um, which I think um, people aren't always aware that you can you can get into midwifery, but universities do accept a level three childcare qualification to allow students to enter into that sector. And youth work is obviously a, a, a really um, significant uh, uh, career pathway, and it's becoming more and more prevalent. Okay, and then we have our creative uh, arts department, and that includes. Um, performing arts. We have our own purpose-based uh, performing arts studio where we've had uh, sold out shows on many of occasion. Um, they're always run very professionally. Uh, so we offer, um, we offer our creative uh, arts suite 
at our Lowestoft and our Yarmouth campus and our uh, performing arts is at Yarmouth campus only. Um, our students are very creative in, in establishing their own work experience. So for instance, we have a picture here of this young lady who set up her own gallery and she ran it very professionally at Skipping's Gallery um, this year. Um, so, you know, we, we, we use spaces, we're very creative, so we don't just exhibit on site, you know, we try to find places within the town so the students can really, really show off their work. And there's sort of many different areas that you might not think of that um, students who complete these qualifications can go on to do. So here, here I've listed some for you, so a tattoo artist, you know, a web developer and a marketing manager, they're, they're miles apart, but because of the wide spectrum of what's on offer in our creative arts department, students can come on and they can leave doing any of these things. Thank you, Amy. So hairdressing again, what we have at Yarmouth is mirrored at Lowestoft. We have a level one course um, and, 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 you know, those are for those students, not only do they lack the GCSE, but sort of, um, uh, the confidence to to communicate with with our clients we have real work environments um, and the level ones act as assistants for our level three um, students so uh, in our level two and three students it's, it's um, building up those basic techniques and as they get into level three it's all about the creativeness of their styles and their dress and their, their cut and color what we're trying to do this year as um, something new is we're going to offer, um, we're, we're going to have a timetable that starts at sort of one in the afternoon to sort of eight at night to give our students a, a better range of opportunities to engage with people who are coming home from work, for instance, to, you know, to do more creative cuts. But we do have lots of visitors that come in and help and we also take our students out. Again, our hairdressing students have won a number of competitions, very well regarded, and I think you'll see that's a it's quite a small picture of one world skills competition where our students took home a bronze and a silver. Okay, the, these are the, the next things that they can do. So there is that level four in salon management. Um, many of our students uh, go and work abroad in, in some holiday destinations and again, cruise ships, um, and some just go straight into industry. So it, it's, it, and apprenticeships. So, you know, the, again, there's such a wide range of opportunities for students once they complete our qualifications. So health and social care, um, is 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 you know we're we're we are always uh, uh, not not uh, I'm fumbling over my words here. Health and social care for us is is a level two and three course that offers students uh, such a wide wide range of opportunities now more than ever. Um, we're becoming a bit more health science based. Um, so in, in, in it's allowing students to go into pediatric nursing, mental health nursing, adult nursing, midwifery again, um, uh, and, and, you know, and we do offer many, many degrees here that, that our level two and three students eventually feed into. Again, they do have significant work placement and they do it in a wide range of places. So charitable, um, trust as well as in residential homes. We work with a James Paget, So we have the James Paget Academy where one of our students was awarded the um, student of the year by the head nurse in London. Um, we work with outreach services, bereavement support. Uh, so health and social care is, is a massive sector. And like I say, it's moving towards more of the health uh, science aspects. And, and, and as I've just, you know, just said, these are some of the things that that um, this sector allows you to go into. It, it really does offer such a wide breadth of opportunities for our students. And that, that workplace and aspect is just so significant in giving them that hands-on experience in what is a very uh, challenging career. So hospitality and catering, uh, again, that is offered at both our Yarmouth and Lowestoft campuses. Um, starting at level one, you can go straight on to a level two. Uh, it allows you the um, experience, it allows your students the experience to work behind the scenes in the kitchen, preparing um, the food and, and developing all those skills and techniques 
uh, that you need to, to, to offer that quality. And then it also focuses on the, the, um, the front of house aspects. So, you know, the customer service and, and the servicing of, of, of the food and those communication skills. So, you know, we do have our restaurant where our students, you know, are fully involved in, um, in taking um, reservations and uh, uh, budgeting the menus and uh, developing and learning those skills needed to create that fine dining experience as well as, you know, the front of house serving um, experience and customer service experience as well. So we've um, taken our students to some lovely places. So we've been to Le Gavroche um, and we've been to the Barclay and the Cafe Royale and Claridge's. And we've also had some really um, fantastic guest chefs come in and, and teach our students firsthand how to fillet fish. And, uh, you know, it's just, just uh, such a diverse course. And these are the sorts of things that students, when they leave us, often go on to do. So, you know, we're really proud of the students, um, you know, what they achieve and, and how exciting that some have actually gone to work in Edge Hotel, you know, school. It's just fantastic some of the things that um, our students go on to do. And again, cruise ships and airlines uh, play into that as well as food service management. Right, so our ESOL Access Program is really um, a program helping our learners practice those skills that they need in reading, writing, speaking, and listening. But it's based on our culture um, and, and leisure activities and British values, daily routines. And it's really just um, a course that helps our students become you know, confident uh, in their everyday lives and you know, with a view to move on to um, some of our mainstream courses. So th this underpins, it just gives them some underpinning knowledge that will help them be successful gaining employment and, um, and uh, continuing on with their further education. So we do go to lots of different places, um, you know, to try to just uh, explore explore uh, uh, you know our, our local and national surroundings and we have lots of visitors in as well so we you know we've had um we've had uh, the police force in we we've, we've had you know lots of lots of people come in from the community to to support the program and uh, these are some of the uh, progression opportunities that the students can go on to Right, so sport, um, we were just offering this at our lowest off campus, but we've now uh, have a course running at um, our Yarmouth campus, and it's probably going to be a level, well, it will be a level one slash two course, and it's going to combine, um, it's going to combine uniform public services with sport just to, just to broaden um, the students' thoughts, really, about where they might like to go. So with that in mind, we're, we're going to have guests in from um, the different sectors and what's lovely is that we just um, recruited um, a member of staff from the police and also from the RAF so that will really help those students make those decisions um, at level one and also in our, our uniform public service courses which I'll talk about in a minute. So at level two and three, we sort of talk about, or our students learn about um, the psychology of sport. It's not just about keeping fit, it's about the psychology of it and the different attributes that you need to be a part of a team. And also there's, you know, um, we develop their coaching skills. And these are some of the progression and career opportunities they can move on to and, and do. So we have our own degree here, University of Suffolk degree in sport, health and exercise and also our um, top up degree, level six in sport, health and exercise. And many of our students who complete level three do go on to that. So you may think that um, travel and tourism is, is, is uh, on the by and by now, but I think quite the opposite, um, but it, it is taking on a different route for now. So, um, you know, th there's still, flights are, are now happening and, and, and they will uh, continue to do so. So we do have our level two air cabin crew where our tutor is, uh, I think three years um, out of being um, the manager of a, of a very well-known airline in the, um, in the air cabin crew department. 
Um, and then we have our level three, which is a two year course. And we've, we've, we're, we're running a different qualification um, around this course that sort of is investigating tourism in the UK and, and developing people in travel and tourism and about marketing and conferencing and eventing, which is, is you know, quite a significant career. Um, so we do lots of exciting trips with these students as well. Um, we've gone onto cruise ships. Uh, we've gone into airlines. We go abroad. Um, and here there's a picture of our students doing their survival tank training. Uh, so it, it is quite an exciting course. And we do have um, lots of guest speakers that come in as well to enhance this curriculum. Again, the, this, we're running a new HNC level four this year. So that's quite exciting. Um, and we have lots of students signed up to do that. And these are some of the other uh, the destinations that students often go on to. Holiday destination, it seems to be quite popular, um, as does cruise ships and tourism boards. So I've spoken a little bit about uniform public services, what we offer at level one. Level two and in, in, in three is just developing those, those skills further. Um, the students, um, instead of actually going out to workplaces, we go and give them those uh, real opportunities um, it, you know, going on long visits to the RAF, um, we go to the fire station, uh, the police, we have lots of involvement with the police there, we go there and they come to us. Um, and, you know, the, like I said, the students undertake a wide range of, of trips, which gives them the skills that they need to be disciplined within uniform public services. And these are some of the progression routes for them. So we have a very new level four public services, again, that's starting this year. Um, and, and lots of our students go to the RAF and the police and the fire service, as well as the NHS. So uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. I do have these um, last two slides. I just thought it might be useful for you to know it's not for the 16 to 19 year olds, actually. It's for um, teachers. So, you know, we have our beautiful beach. Uh, line and, and uh, especially in the current situation that we find ourselves in, teaching outside is becoming increasingly popular. So um, we have a, a fully qualified beach school practitioner. And whilst we, um, as, as East Coast College, have trained primary school teachers to use beach school methodology, we're now starting to get inquiries from secondary schools. So I thought I'd throw that one out there. So it is a proper qualification and it allows teachers to take students outside and teach them within our nat nat uh, natural surroundings. And then the next slide is forest school and it, it's a similar approach, but instead of the beach, it's the forest. And this is Julie Southgate, our forest school leader, who's fully qualified to um, teach teachers how to teach outside. So, Thank you for that. And uh, thank you for listening to that long spiel. And I will now hand you over to Pam Burt. Thank you, Holly. And um, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for um, so many of you taking the time to join us. Um, as you can see, I'm going to talk to you about construction, building services, engineering and foundation. Um, so I think I'm going to start off with um, construction um, within construction, we have brickwork, carpentry, and painting and decorating. Painting and decorating takes place only on the lowest off campus. You can see on the on the slide it says multi trade, um, and painting and decorating multi trade. That's because we like to put in some tiling and some plaster in master classes as as the students progress through. You can see that we've got um, a year one, year two um, model. Um, year one being your level one. We've changed that a little bit this year um, for going forward. Um, so students can choose a pathway, for example, if they choose the brickwork pathway, then they will, their work will be mainly around brickwork. They'll get a lot of practical um, experience in brickwork, but we'll also introduce some carpentry in that. Because the trades work so closely together, we felt it was important that they have an appreciation of how those trades would fit together when working on sites. So that would be the same if the students decide to um, follow the carpentry um, pathway, they would uh, practical skills around carpentry, but then they would get some appreciation of brickwork and some practical brickwork skills as well. 
all of these trades, the idea is we move students and progress them on to the to apprenticeships and employment. We work through all um, these trades. We work very closely with the apprenticeships team. Um, and as I said, the aim is to secure apprenticeships and employment going forward for these for these young people um, to get them um, ready for um, skills in the sector, whether that be practical skills, whether that be their employability skills, but to be able to to move on. Um, one of those things around the construct around the brickwork is we have an outside pad on those stuff campus as well. So they're as well as working within the brick workshop, they're also expected to work outside um, to get a bit of real life <laughs> first laying bricks in uh, in, in the rain <laughs> and the snow. So um, we thought that was quite important. Um, Brickwork carpentry, again, on both campuses, whereas painting and decorating um, is based at lower staffed. So on this slide, you can see the entry requirements that we're looking at for, um, for the different trades. Um, and you can see that they vary. We're looking at level one um, brickwork, looking for an, uh, a grade three, grade two around maths and English to emphasise the importance of maths and English within these trades. Um, however, students, we do appreciate that there will be students that are coming this year that haven't necessarily got that. And um, the team are still interviewing these young people, but we also have provision um, within later on that I'll talk about within the progression for students that have no English and maths, but need to gain these for any curriculum area that they choose to go in, not just into the trades. So all of these, um, these trades, we're looking at focusing on um, a development of an appreciation of the trade, the practical hand skills required to succeed in the trade, develop communication skills, make, skills, make sure we have good timekeeping, good attendance. And towards the end of the courses, this year we're looking at introducing the possibility of the driving theory test because we do acknowledge that young people will potentially need to travel to gain employment and also the possibility to study for the CS, CS test to um, give them entry to, um, to site. So if I move quick, just quickly to building services, uh, plumbing and electrical pathways, um, you can see on here um, that again we're looking at a year model we're looking at, um, at a one year two year and three year again looking at moving students into employment into apprenticeships working with Rachel's team quite closely but also moving for the electricians into a domestic domestic pathway a domestic electrician and then the electro and mechanicals moving more into your HNC your offshore wind and energy um, engineering industry marine and um, the food and drink plumbing again a year model um, we're looking at GCSE three to four for direct entry at level two for plumbing um, and heat and engineer and um, GCSE grade four for electrical pathway again direct entry at year one into level two and um, reason being these are get quite quickly quite difficult when it comes to maths and science um, so we're looking at, at, at a GCSE for um, for electrical year after year one in plumbing um, there is the opportunity to move to move into industry but they will carry need to carry on training within that industry within plumbing okay thank you so within building services, both um, electrical and plumbing require a good subject knowledge around science. There is, there's a lot of science and maths within the curriculum and that's the reason we've asked for that. The knowledge, skills and behaviours are aimed at promoting autonomous learning and research to support assignments, exams, ready to progress to apprenticeships. Construction and building services, work experience that we've done, um, 
were carried out. A lot of community projects working with the waterways. We worked with the Festival of Light on the beach, building pizza ovens and other, um, and other constructions. We were working at um, uh, re redeveloping a park shelter um, in Everett Park that was burned down. Um, we're working with Rachel at Lound to revamp the site, ready for that to go live for civil, um, for, for her civil work. And we've also been working with, with St George's Theatre. Some of the employers that um, the students have progressed to are Persimmon, Carter, Gasway, Dodds, Norse and Ayres. And like Holly's been talking about with um, a lot of her areas, some of the master classes that they undertake we look at working at heights we look at renewables we look at fire extinguishing extinguish training the cscs training first aid and moving and handling are just a few from within um, building services and construction so moving to engineering as you can see we expect learners to achieve a grade four in english maths and science um, again due to the level of maths and science that's in there we've moved away from levels and are now using a one year two year three year model with direct entry at engineering to level three um, year two learners have the option of moving to work or apprenticeships and or progressing to level three where we will be looking at them moving from level three to hit to higher education um, Within automotive, again, we're looking at the one, two, three year model with year one, including level two work, year three, including year two, including level three work and year three starting to pre prepare students for HE again. Um, during year one, students will decide if they're going to specialise going down the independent garage route or down a main dealer route. These are quite different. Now the main dealer route requires grade four at GCSE and maths. And that's mainly because the main dealer apprenticeships don't deliver maths and English. They expect the, the, the apprentices to come with maths and English, um, and then they take them on to their own national training facilities. Um, we, ha we have, as Holly mentioned before, Holly mentioned um, around automotive, uh, Holly mentioned before around um, skills and in automotive we've had learners reaching regional finals in um, skills competitions as well. So on this you can see the two pathways that I just mentioned, the um, independent garage and the main dealer route and the, um, the types of um, progression, the types of jobs that fall within those and the entry requirements are on there as well. Now, welding and fabrication, again, looking at the same model, um, the year one, year two, year three model, um, um, learners within welding and fabrication are able to move to apprenticeships from the end of year two. Um, we're looking at a GCSE grade three, maths and English, uh, and we're looking for, and also within their curriculum, they're looking to upskill um, to important short courses for within industry to um, increase learners employability again working at heights working in confined spaces spaces and abrasive wheels training etc within engineering welding and um, automotive um, employers that students have progressed on to include rpc mnh plastics proserve which are gas and oil siemens ssc renewable scottish power Bird's Eye, John Gross, Mitchells and Stowen. When it comes to work experience, it's a little bit more difficult at times to, to um, get our young people into um, work experience. So we've been a little bit creative with it and we're looking at, or we have looked at using um, Siemens, Scottish Power and James Fish that have developed, given, developed a brief for the students from the company for a piece of work for them to complete and then for the, have a presentation event where they need to deliver that back to the, um, the companies and their managers. For the Siemens Scottish Power um, brief that we were given this year was about developing a maintenance schedule for the wind turbines so they had to look at the cost of it, the staffing that they would need, the timetables, 
that they, um, they would need and the equipment that they would need. And they were supported to do this by a third year apprentice from Siemens who was previously a, a learner at East Coast College. We've had a brief given to us from James Fisher, um, which was about subsea surveying. And again, they had to do all the working out of all the logistics of it, the boats that they're going to need, the equipment, the staffing, when they're going to do it, the best times to do it. So really, really interesting. And then having to deliver this back to the managers of these companies um, it was provided a real valuable experience for the students. So foundation and progression. For foundation and progression, we're looking at... Um, courses and study programmes from entry one to level one, which also includes the Prince's Trust. The aim of foundation, as you can see, is about students progressing to one of four um, destinations, the wider college, a level one, level two programme, supported internship, which at the moment we're running one at the James Paget, you might have heard of Project Search. Um, students on that are immersed five days a week into into the hospital and um, the aim is that at the end of three rotations they're in a position to be able to apply for jobs we at the start of this year we had 12 learners start that program and six have secured work employment and six have actually been working throughout the covid um crisis at the hospital they've continued to work and support their colleagues within the departments that they work within they also um another progression area will be volunteering within the community and we're looking to increase independence of the learners within within a foundation program the end of the progression pathway is to support learners again to the wider college employment and apprenticeships but we've had also also had students who've studied with the princess trust who have gone on to university Within the pathway, within the progression pathway, we have um, something called the Engage program, which is specifically for those learners who don't haven't succeeded with maths and English and need to carry on a little bit longer with it to secure the vocational area they, where they would like to go to get the entry qualifications to get them in into those areas. These these courses are very supportive, very nurturing, um, and quite individual for those for those young people so thank you very much for listening and i'd like to hand back to nikki now thank you everybody thanks for um speaking um our brain really with extra information about actually how our students progress, the kind of experiences they'll be having when they're um, when they're at college at, at the sixth form. This can really help you um, talk through options with um, with your uh, students and clients uh, when you're with them. Um, so on the screen now, I've just included some um, contact points for you, um, including the friendship teams, which uh, Rachel mentioned, admissions, so have a general here to help email. Uh, which we, we set up actually um, when we went on to be in a virtual college, but we're going to keep it going. It's worked really well. Um, students, parents, schools, um, quite a um, contacts are, are using that, so we'll keep that going. Um, and, and I will remain the, the school link um, going into next year, so please do get in touch with me if you've got um, any questions or if um, you want to refer back to that initial kind of Gatsby work and, and thoughts you have there. Um, so the, the prospectus will be available in August. That will be available online and also we'll, we'll be delivering that because we know that um, people like hard copies as well to have a look at and kind of put notes in and things. Um, so I'm going to move now to um, questions and answers. Um, so Amy has got access to the, any questions we've already asked and please if you do have some questions now please just pop them in the in the Q&A's and then what Amy will do is just go to the, um, the relevant person um, to answer your question. Thanks Amy. Great, thank you, Nikki. Um, yeah, we have had some questions uh, through, so I'll just start working through those. Uh, the first one uh, has actually got a, a couple of questions all in one. Um, so uh, somebody's asked, what does a typical week look like for a student? And then they've, they've sort of narrowed it down to say, how many hours, 
how much time will they spend on each course and can they mix level three courses or just pick one i'm not sure what what um what course section that was aimed at um is, is anyone able to help with that one i mean yeah i think perhaps holly and keith they've both come in they've had the same thought process as i've had Perhaps Holly could um, answer what a typical um, week and a day would look like for students, and Keith can talk about um, about mixing level three, which I think is probably where where that best answer would come from. If that's okay. Okay. Yes. So sure, I can. Um, so a typical day looks a little bit different at uh, East Coast College than it does at the sixth form. So I'll let Keith go go through the sixth form, but um, at uh, uh, East Coast College, where you choose one uh, subject to study. Um, you, you will study that vocational subject and in, in addition to that you'll also have English and math if required. You'll have PSD and you'll have tutorial um, and as well as that students have the opportunity to engage in some self-directed study so that helps them build up their their own independence and um, research skills. Um, so they're normally in college around three full days. Now each course is slightly different. Um, so we try three full days and then we have a place, at least one if not two placement days where students are engaging in a work placement. Well, and also we do try to provide um, lots of enrichment opportunities throughout the day. So we have some, we have some uh, lunchtime clubs and we also run some clubs after um, uh, the, the main crunch of the day is over. And our breakfast club. Keith? Okay, in the sixth form, we will have basically every student would take three subjects, or a, well, a minimum of three subjects. Each of those would be four and a half hours taught lessons per week. So the majority of our students will be in actually all five days in a week, but not all the time. They may be off early on Friday afternoon if they're lucky, or they may have to stay to the end of the Friday afternoon. It depends on the timetabling. This year, we're trying to get the timetable to fit so students can only have to come in for four days a week. So we give them a chance to do some additional work experience and work placements. And so generally four and a half hours each uh, for an A-level. Level two courses are nine hours, but with the addition of actually of taking perhaps your GCSE maths and English again, which would be basically three hours each per week. Now, as to the mixing, that you can mix A-levels with obviously BTECs. Uh, again, it, there'd have to be a reason and a certain, uh, you know, and certain students have this reason why they want to do that. But we do accept it, and a lot of our students actually would take uh, perhaps a diploma BTEC and worth two A-levels with a single A-level as well. But for the majority of our students, they'll either take an A-level path or obviously a, a BTEC, uh, well, I say BTEC, I mean a BTEC type, Cambridge National type, path because obviously that's going to get them into university better or in, into a, a sense of employment with some uh with, with better with better results anyway hopefully that answers it i could give you examples but i don't know if that's specific if if there are specifics if you contact nikki at the end of this i'm quite happy to phone up and discuss for you Great, thank you, Keith. Um, we've had another question around um, the level three courses. Somebody said, at the end of the three year course, do they have a full level three qualification? Yes. Uh, not everyone, because some may, because of the factors, uh, you know, they may have been obviously with uh, mental health difficulties and only managed two A levels uh, equivalents. But we take a full program as a three A level equivalent after three years. And look, many of our A-level students, all BTEC students, start off uh, on a level two type program, make it through, and then succeed mainly on the BTEC courses all the way through to the end. And after three years, we'll have the grades to go to university, three full A-level equivalents. Brilliant, thank you, Keith. Um, some questions around apprenticeships here, uh, probably for you, Rachel. Um, yeah. Do you have an idea of the expected impact on your apprenticeship starts compared to last year? Yeah, so at the moment, recruitment is still strong. We're still having employers contact us regarding new signups. There are a few sectors, for example, hair and catering, where they've delayed starts, but they have not said about not recruiting next year. So I envisage there may be a shorter um, period in terms of signups 
but we recruit throughout the year, roll on, roll off. So we will keep working with employers to make sure there's the demand and keep working with young people. So if, for example, someone started on a full-time course and then was successful in apprenticeship in year, we would support that and vice versa. Okay, Rachel, sorry, well, we've got you one more here. Um, are you hearing from any specific sectors that are reluctant to recruit apprentices at this time? And in contrast, have you heard from any other sectors that are really keen to recruit apprentices? Okay, what I'd probably say is at the moment, the pattern is strongly linked to the impact of COVID on sectors. So um, the hair, the beauty and the catering have seen a, we're going to delay starts rather than stop. Um, and there has been a slight increase in construction and engineering. Now, obviously, once employers receive um, financial incentives or support for certain sectors or the apprenticeship growth, I think obviously we'll then see um, a pickup in more recruitment and engaging with new employers as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Rachel. I think that covers another question we had in as well, so that's great. Um, somebody else has asked, do you expect year 11 visits to be virtual in the autumn term? Uh, I'm not sure, Nikki, is, is that one for you? Yeah. Um, I'm planning for both. Um, so I'm hoping that we can, um, that we can have students um, on campus. We might have to think about it a little bit differently um, from before. So if, you, if, if any of our viewers have visited before, actually we've got several schools together and, um, and you visited that way. And so we might have to think about actually um, something slightly different from that. Um, so maybe um, inviting a school in at a time and actually organising um, something so that we've got less people on site and, and students can visit um, at, at active classrooms and, and get involved that way. Um, I'm really I'm really interested to find out from schools actually what, what you think that um, would work for, for you and with your risk assessments and what your parents um, and carers feedback is um, to you. So, um, we will definitely continue doing virtual um, sessions, so virtual um, open days, but that will be hopefully in addition to the on-site visits. So, uh, from our point of view, we know we can't replace that virtually. Um, I think we would just want options for them, really. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, someone's asked whether we can send out the PowerPoint at the end, which, yes, of course, we, we can definitely do that. That's no problem yeah. at all. Um, Somebody else has asked, uh, and sorry, that you'll, you'll have noticed the slides in the background have flipped back, but so please just ignore those for the moment. But somebody's asked, um, uh, so I think their previous question when they were talking about the three year programs was actually um, addressed to Pam and the, uh, the stuff that she was talking about. So sorry, I'm just going back up and looking at the question. Uh, I think that might have been the one at the end of a three year course, do they have a full level three qualification? Pam, Pam, are you able to answer that for your area? Yeah, um, at the end of the three year, at the end of year, year two in some of the areas, they would move to the um, level three apprenticeship. So they would complete the um, level three with the, uh, um, as an apprentice, so yes. And for um, things like the electrical, they would complete level three, the full level three, before moving on to perhaps a HMC, so yeah. Okay, and another one for you here, uh, Pam. Uh, does the foundation course offer a progression link to the new T-level courses? Yeah, so sorry, I sorry, should have probably made it clear. Foundation, the foundation course that I was talking about is the course for students with learning difficulties and disabilities. So they are likely to progress from into the wider college, but it would potentially take them longer to progress to um, any of the T level courses, we're looking at them progressing potentially to level one initial, a level one provision initially, or move into um, the supporting internships. Great, thank you, Pam. Um, I think that's it for questions now. Unless anybody else has got any they'd like to ask, I think we've we've done all of those. Um, obviously, as Nikki said, if you have got any questions that you think of once we um, once we finish with today's webinar, then all of the contact information is on the screen now anyway. And uh, I'll, I'll just hand back to Nikki to say the, the final farewell. Yep, thank you ever so much everybody for your time. Uh, we will uh, um, have a link to it on the website. Uh, it's quite a large file, um, so I'll send the links out and so any, anybody can access it and those um, who maybe colleagues you know couldn't join us will be able to access that information too. 
Um, so please get in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you.